active painter, sometimes do a bit of printmaking as well. Um, and I guess I've always been drawn to like narratives and like people um, in my work. That's why, I mean, I've always wanted to paint, but I always have to have like a figure, particularly interested in like the way people in paintings like interact with, with one another and the different relationships I can like showcase. So most recently, the series of work that I've been working on has been about romantic relationships. So looking at two figures in an early stage of their relationship and meeting, falling in love and like different scenes and moments in that kind of sequence of them, like gazing at each other, holding hands, reaching for each other, um, hugging and like, the different stages of intimacy that they can kind of like I guess delve into um I guess I'm primarily interested in like love and romance because I don't witness enough of that like in my life in terms of like media from like black queer people so I kind of like paint the things that I want to see more of in the world sometimes I just go straight into like the painting creating and like work from imaginations and then I would say like 50% of it is also like found imagery. Um, I don't really paint for my own life. Sometimes like personal photographs of like friends, family, or, you know, one time I was on a date and I was like, oh, this is like the perfect position of a paint, a scene that I'm painting. Can I take a photo of us? Because I need to like get the positions. Otherwise I, when I want like particular positions of people where they're like, holding each other in a particular way or standing in a particular way sometimes I will like see a film or see a, like a music video and see a scene in that and like take a pause it take a screenshot because I'm like oh that's the perfect kind of thing that I'm trying to uh capture and then otherwise it could just be like stock footage that I like found on like google images like literally me googling like couple laying in the grass and then like yeah, I've just like seen like the cringy kind of stock photos from that, but like it's like the position that I want bodies to be held in. So um I will take it from that. So it's like it's a mix of like different sometimes it's like um like famous scenes in like photographers' work and things like that. That I'm just like, oh that's just so beautiful. I want to like recreate that using paint or other mediums. I would say I wanted to make this series of work for like a while, like the vibrancy like the bold bright like yellows and oranges like it's something I've kind of dabbled in a bit in my painting practice like over the few last few years like I'm primarily known for like painting like lots of blue scenes and like my first few exhibitions solo exhibitions were kind of like all dyed indigo work and the past few years I've been like exploring other dyes and like particularly interested in like the vibrancy of yellow and like when I've been focusing on this like romantic subject matter, I always like see it as yellow because I'm trying to like paint like the joy and the intense emotions of the people in this like particular relationship. Um, so I kind of wanted to have, always wanted to have like an exhibition where all of the works were like this bold, like vibrant yellow. And that was kind of like, you know, lifting people's spirits as they like walk into the exhibition and have it be kind of like overwhelming. Um, with the vibrancy of the colour um so I kind of set myself a challenge I guess with this series because every now and then I've like I do yellow paintings here and there but I've never done like a full complete series so I was basically building on some of the initial paintings that I did maybe like three or maybe even four years ago where I first started using yellow and some of them are included in the exhibition and some of them are like paintings that I guess I started maybe three years ago, but I found challenging. I found it more difficult to work with yellow than it was with blue because the dyeing techniques that I guess I developed with indigo were different. I didn't have the same kind of ease of contrast between the color and like getting a vibrant yellow is a lot harder than getting a blue. So I guess it was for me finding other ways like using more mixed media. So using paint and pastels and inks and like using that in combination with like batik and dyeing canvas um, to like build up a painting. And I guess some of these paintings I worked on for a few years because I just like wouldn't give up on them and like kept like reworking them and adding materials until I was like satisfied that it looked <laughs> okay or good <laughs> or whatever. Um, 
because yeah so I guess that's kind of the difference in this series of work is like I've learned I guess to like keep working and like to keep pushing myself with material um to get to a point that I'm happy with so the history that I guess I was first like drawn to was like the history of like indigo dyeing because it's quite like, like an old dye that like spans across loads of different cultures and particularly I was interested in, in Nigerian culture because that's where my family's heritage are from and Nigeria has a huge like textile industry involving um, indigo dyeing things indigo um, particularly this uh, I guess style called adire which is like just means like literally tie and dye so they use like a range of like resistance techniques like like tying like seeds and stones or like folding things or like using batik or like a cassava paste to resist the dye so initially I was like using like indigo to dye my canvas and there are a couple of works in the show that still do use that indigo um but I guess for yellow I was not using like an I started off using natural dyes because I wanted to keep that kind of same I guess lineage of um that I was using with Indo because it's like you know a dye that comes from a plant but because like yellow is such like a light fast color it fades in direct light so quickly so that became an issue when I was initially dyeing yellow so I initially dyed like my first canvases using turmeric because it had that really gorgeous like golden yellow um but it didn't work out um so it like started fading so then I kind of just literally just use like any kind of artificial dye that I can get my hands on I would say like I've still got a lot to like learn I guess about dyeing I guess because I kind of I'm coming from it from a background of a painter I'm used to working with paint and like pigments in a paint tube are like so bright and vibrant and they don't fade as easily um, so I just kind of like I'm teaching myself how to dye and like teaching myself how to use like resistance dyeing techniques using the batik, like the melted wax and applying that and dyeing. And also I noticed that like the uh, the contrast between yellow and the resistance, so the white area of the batik, it, like it isn't as like strong, like strong as against like blue and the resistance because blue and white I guess is a larger contrast than yellow and white so I tend to like rework into them with like inks and like having like the skin tones and the browns and things like that kind of make the resistance pop out a little bit more. work I'm being very like deliberate I guess in representing um particular groups of people but like also not wanting to be like limited by that I guess like I mentioned earlier like I paint scenes of like black queer people because I don't see enough of them like just like living in joyful harmony and like having like moments of just falling in love without all of like the grief that also comes with the rest of life and society um they're kind of that's why I kind of always describe this like um these kind of scenes as like a bubble in like a person's life or like in a person's relationship where they're kind of like separate from the outside world and it's just like focusing on them and their emotions so I guess I'm deliberately very deliberately trying to like focus in on um these particular scenes because I want more visibility of that and want people to like recognize that like our lives are not just full of like conflict and I guess identity crisis and sometimes it is just like love and peace and joyfulness um and I guess I keep my subject matter like quite simple in that way and avoid like kind of the big kind of complexities of like life and emotion to like focus on like the beauty of like tenderness and like intimacy like just like sharing a look with someone or holding someone's hand is just as important as like other things that are happening in our lives um and sometimes get overlooked um by like you know the busyness of life and working and 
struggling and all of that things but like we can also appreciate those like small moments um, where we just get to like be and be loved I guess I'm interested in exploring like other mediums as well like not just painting or like I've done a lot of mono printing but I'm really interested in exploring like screen printing more and like other forms of printmaking I've always said that I want to make like a film or like do photography one day so I think I'm thinking like yesterday I was like looking at different like workshops that I could do um, in London over the next few months and be like I should sign up for this sign up for that um, I guess because yeah it's nice to like learn new skills continually and like always want to be a student um, so um, I think that's those are kind of the next steps for me like learning adding on to my practice. Mm -hmm.